Hello, everyone, and welcome back to week three on electromagnetism. This week's focus is going to be on the four differential equations that you see on the screen. On the screen. Maxwell's equations, which describe the behavior of electromagnetic fields in, and it is arguably one of the most important uh, set of equations in the entire physics. Um, in this particular week, we're going to work on vacuum, so we're not going to have epsilon relative um, on the menu, and we are also going to work with static problems, meaning that these fields are going to be zero because there's a derivative with respect to the time going on there. Okay, so the first exercise was about applying equations involving E, the first and the third equations. In particular, we are given an um, atomistic toy model consisting of an electron. Well, actually, the electron is not here. It is just uh, the nucleus of the electron. It's producing a field that is given by this. And we're going to see that this field is produced by a constant energy, uh, sorry, a, a constant charge distribution. Um, over a sphere of radius A. Okay, so first we need to confirm that this field is physical. We need to confirm that the curl of E is zero or E is irrotational. And that is the case. If we apply the third Maxwell's equation, we will come to the conclusion that this is zero. So it actually makes sense for static problems. Now, we also that all that immediately tells us that uh, we can actually calculate mm, or we can co potentially construct E from a gradient of something. And this something can be potentially calculated by applying this formula for the potential. This something is called the, actually the minus potentially. Okay, so the second part of this exercise was about applying the first Maxwell's equation one that involves also known as um, the Gauss law to calculate the charge density inside the nucleus. Okay, so the only thing we have to do is just to compute the divergence of E, which is thrice alpha, and rearrange this expression to get this. So, as I said before, this is a constant potential distribution, constant charge distribution, sorry, and now from here, we can actually calculate the total charge inside the nucleus in terms of alpha and A. Okay, this is just some careful calculation, some integration over the three variables that you see here, and you should get the expression that you see on the screen. Finally, provided that the charge density outside the nucleus is zero, you need to compute the field outside the nucleus. Crucially, here we need to apply Gauss law transform this divergence that you see here into an integral over a closed surface. In this case, a sphere. You follow step below, and the final answer the alpha a to the cube to the three divided by r squared. Okay, now let's look at magnetic fields, because the second exercise was about that. The first thing is, like in the first exercise, to verify that the V field actually complies Maxwell's equations, in particular, the second Maxwell's equation. And we just have to compute the divergence of this object, which if, you're, if you've done it um, carefully, you will come to the conclusion that it is indeed verified. So, okay. Now, the, 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 the second part of this exercise is about computing the current density of the field that can produce this field. Now, if you follow, again, the steps of, um, I mean, if you apply the definition of a rotational, of a curl, sorry, you're going to come to the conclusion that the final answer, the current, is uh, B naught divided by mu naught. Okay. So far, these exercises were rather simple. The following exercise is the real deal. Okay, we have two parallel wires with a charge that are moving from one end to the other. On the one hand, the electrostatic forces repel each other. So in principle, these two charges, these two wires, should be moving apart because they repelled. 
On the other hand, we know that from the Lorentz force applied to this system, these two currents, because they are traveled in, with, in the same direction, so should in some sense attract. And we have calculated these in class. In principle, these two charges attract with this following this form. So the force per unit length that you see here should be equal to mu naught, the product of the two currents, divided by two pi multiplied by two. So if you multiply, if you apply or you write down the definition of current, which is basically velocity of charges, the microscopic definition of, of uh, current, which is uh, velocity multiplied by the carry, uh, carry concentration multiplied by the um, charge that these carriers carry, we come to the conclusion that it should be something of this nature. Okay. Now let's look at electrostatic force between them. We need to apply the first Maxwell's equation. And we're going to choose this time a cylinder, not a sphere, but a cylinder to compute the electric field produced by an infinitely large charge line. As before, the enclosed charge is going to be given by this integration. And the electric field is going to be after some degree query, lambda divided by two pi d epsilon naught. But remember guys, here we need to, the force accepted by one over the other. So we actually need to multiply by the other charge, which gives this, this solution. Now, here's the crucial moment. The electrostatic force and the Lorentz force should be equal to each other. So we need to make them equal. And we do so to realize a couple of things. First, that the final results actually do not depend on D and lambda, which were quantities that were provided by the exercise. The second thing that you, you have to realize is something quite interesting, is that the fact that the speed that you get is actually the speed of light. Okay. At this point, something should be telling you that the answer is wrong. At least when I see V equal to C, I immediately think hmm, something's rotten in the state of Denmark. And this is because we assume we are working with Newtonian mechanics. Okay, but we are a bit more advanced. We will revisit this topic. For the time being, try to be content with the answer. Stay tuned for more electromagnetism. See you next week.